In the previous lecture, we have seen different kinds of flip flops like JK SR flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop, and then D flip flop. Okay, after that, we have seen how to convert the given flip flop to the other flip flop. Okay, so we have seen several conversions over there, and then now let us see the counters. Okay, so a counter is nothing but a digital circuit which counts the values from uh, different directions. Okay, so let us see it. So these are the contents that we are going to discuss. So, like what is a counter and what are the types of the counters and after that we will see 2 bit triple up counter by using positive edge triggering and then negative edge triggering after that we will see 2 bit triple down counter using positive as well as negative edge triggering so the, uh, these are the outcomes of the class so at the end of this class you will be able to create your uh, up counter as well as down counters using any kind of the triggering okay so this is the outcome and then next let us see what is counter so a counter is nothing but a sequential circuit which counts the values okay so based on the user's design a, a counter is nothing but a sequential circuit which counts the values based on the user design and then a digital counter is nothing but so what is a counter here so it is nothing but a set of the flip flops okay so based on the uh, we have to use a toggle flip flops here so that is jk as well as t we should use only those two flip flops for construction of the counters okay so it is nothing but a set of a jk flip flops or a set of t flip flops okay so they are they are having two types of the counters one is synchronous counter and then other one is asynchronous counters so based on the clock pulses given for the flip flops they are classified into two types one is synchronous other one is asynchronous in the synchronous counters the clock pulse is given the same clock pulse is given for all the flip flops and in the asynchronous counter only the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop and then after that we will give the output of the previous flip flop is given as clock pulse to the next flip flop okay so let us see it and here you can also see here a synchronous counter is also called as a ripple counter a synchronous counter is also called as a ripple counter we need to remember this point and then next let us see what is a synchronous counter how it looks like and then after that we will see synchronous counter okay so this is about your asynchronous counter as i said so only the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop after that the output of that flip flop is given as clock pulse for the next flip flop so that is nothing but asynchronous counter we can see here so this is our uh, jk uh, counter this is our up counter by using jk flip flops okay so here we have four jk flip flops okay so the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop you can see here the clock pulse is given the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop and then after that the clock pulse is given okay so you can see here the clock pulse is uh, uh, the clock pulse for this flip flop is nothing but the output of the previous flip flop okay so the output is either q or q q bar so based on the counters we will give the q or q bar okay so here the output of the q is given as clock pulse for the next flip flop similarly the output of the q of the second flip flop is given as clock pulse for the third flip flop similarly the output of the third flip flop is given as clock pulse for the fourth flip flop so this is nothing but asynchronous counter okay so you need to remember that only the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop and then the output of the first flip flop is given as clock pulse for the next flip flop so if we give like that that is called as asynchronous counter and then next let us see synchronous counter and then next let us see synchronous counter uh, these are all our flip flops four four flip flops that we have given here and then you can see here this is our clock okay so the first flip flop uh, the clock pulse is given for the first flip flop and the same clock pulse is taken for all the flip flops so whatever the whatever the clock pulse that is given for the first flip flop so we are giving the same clock pulse for all the flip flops the same clock pulse is given for all the flip flops so this is nothing but synchronous counter okay so next let us see next let us see more about counters so a counter may be an up counter okay so both asynchronous and synchronous counter may be an up counter down counter up down counter so up counter means it counts the values from 0 to n and down counter means it counts the values from n to 0 and then in the up down counter it counts the values in both directions for some point of time it counts from 
up values, up counter values that is 0 to n and after some point of time it counts the values from n to 0. So, that is nothing but up down counter. And then uh, uh, so, what about what type of the flip flops that we have to use for the counters? So, we have to use only two types of the flip flops that is toggle flip flops. Okay, So, the, those are JK as well as T flip flops. So, we should make use only those two for creating counters. Okay, So, next let us see so, a counter contains, uh, as, I, as I have said earlier, so a counter contains a set of the flip-flops. So, based on the bits that we are going to use, we must use that many number of the flip-flops. Suppose, if you want to use 2-bit triple counter, uh, if you want to use 2-bit, then you have to take 2 number of the flip-flops. If it is 3-bit, we should use 3 flip-flops. If it is 4-bit, we should use 4 flip-flops in the circuit. Okay. So, a counter contains a set of the flip-flops. Okay. So, based on the bits, okay, we will take the number of the flip-flops. So, here I have given the values. For example, if it is 2-bit counter, we will take 2 flip-flops and then 4 states. Okay. So, for the 3-bit counter, we take 3 flip-flops as well as 8 states. Okay. So, we take n number of the, okay. So, if we have n bits, okay. So, based on this convention, so if it is n-bit counter, it requires n number of the flip-flops and 2 power n number of the states. Okay. So, you need to remember here. Uh, so, based on the 2-bit counter, we required 4, uh, we required 2 flip-flops and then 4 states. So, 3-bit counter, we required 3 flip-flops and then 8 states. So, for n-bit counter, okay, for n-bit counter, we required n number of the flip-flops and then 2 power n number of the states, okay. So, let us see it, okay. So, let us have, uh, uh, we will get more idea on this, okay. So, uh, by looking at the more examples on the counters, okay. So, next let us see. So, here we are going to see 2 bit triple up counter. So, for that we require 2 flip flops. Okay. So, let us, uh, I am going to construct, uh, I am going to uh, construct the logical circuit for it. So, here I am going to take 2 flip flops. Okay. So, I am going to take JK flip flop. Okay. So, we can use either JK or T flip flop. Okay. So, here I am going to take 2 JK flip flops. Okay. So, this is the first flip flop and then this is my other flip flop. So, I am taking J2 K2. So, that means this is my second flip flop. Okay. So, the values for this JK. So, always this values should be high. Okay. So, the inputs for the J as well as K are high. And then so, we are going to construct a ripple. So, ripple means it is nothing but a synchronous counter. That means only the clock pulse should be given for the first flip flop. So, I am going to give the clock for this flip flop. And then, so up counter means, uh, up counter means that we have to give the input, okay. So, we have to give the clock pulse for the next flip flop. So, that is Q bar. So, that is your up counter, okay. So, like this you will construct your uh, 2 bit triple up counter using positive edge triggering. Okay. So, see here. So, we have to take two flip flops. So, the clock pulse is given. So, the clock pulse is given only for the first flip flop and the clock pulse is for the, uh, the clock pulse for the second flip flop is output of the first flip flop. So, for the up counter, we have to give the Q1 bar as clock pulse for the next flip flop and if it is down counter, we have to give Q1 as clock pulse for the next flip flop. You need to remember this one. So, for the up counter, using positive edge triggering, you have to give Q1 bar as clock pulse for the next flip flop and then similarly in the down counter, in the down counter we have to give, we have to give Q1 as clock pulse for the next flip flops. Okay. So, based on the bits we will give like this. If it is 3 bit, you will increase one more, you will take one more flip flop and then you will give Q1, Q2 bar as input as clock pulse for the next flip flop. Okay. So, based on the counters we will, based on the number of the bits that we will take the values like this. Okay. So, next let us see the timing diagram. Okay. So, let us see it here. So, the timing diagram first we need to write the clock. Okay. So, I am writing the clock here. Okay. So, this is nothing but clock. So, we are using the positive edge triggering. So, that means that so the clock initially it will be 0. It will be in the state 0. So, whenever uh, the positive means so this is the rising edge. Okay. We have to take this as okay. So, the rising edge. So, this is my clock. So, the clock will be acting like this. So, this is the clock. So, let us take the rising edges 
okay so this is our clock okay so from this period okay so you can take the, you can take this one so from from the rising edge to the rising edge so this is our one clock pulse okay so from the rising edge and then to the other rising edge we can treat it as one clock pulse so we have taken the clock like this and then you based on our circuit okay so based on our circuit uh, the clock pulse of the second flip flop is q1 bar okay so for that we need to take first q1 and then okay so let us take the q1 bar so let us take q1 here so the q1 starts with zero so it will be in, uh, whenever it says okay whenever it sees the rising edge of the clock pulse so it changes the state so and then that will be in the same state until it sees the next rising edge okay so the q1 is started with zero and then it is changing the state because it is seeing the clock pulse rising edge and then this will be in the same state until it sees the next rising edge okay so like this it will work okay so here we have this this will be in the same state until it sees the rising edge and then it is changing the state now so that means it is going to zero and then next uh, it is going to rising edge so it is changing the state like this and then let us take the q1 bar so why because the clock pulse of the second the clock pulse of the second flip flop is q1 bar so we have to take q1 bar here so already q1 is derived so let us take q1 the complement of the q1 so the q1 bar will be like this just take the complement of the q1 so 1 so this will be 0 1 so this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 is 1 and then here it starts with 1 and then whenever it is 1 it will be in 0 so 1 0 so 1 0 so this is our q1 and let us derive q2 so let us take the positive uh, let us take the rising edges here okay so the rising edges are here so let us take q2 here so the q2 starts with 0 this will be in the same state until it sees the rising edge of q1 so this th here we are seeing the rising edge of q1 bar so we are we are changing the state of the q2 so it is started with zero and then this will be in the same state until it is seeing the next rising edge so here it is changing the state so this will be in the same state until it sees the next rising edge okay so like this it sees and then now let us take the count now let us take the counting values okay so we are taking a clock here so let us take the clock and always the clock will be high and then next let us take q2 and then q1 always you have to write q2 first and then q1 next so q2 q1 and then counter so let us see what is happening with q2 as well as q1 so when the q2 is 0 the value of q1 you can see here when the q2 is 0 the value of q1 is 0 so q2 is 0 the value of q1 is also in the 0 so we will write 0 as well as 0 when the q2 is 0 so the value of q1 so similarly this is the other second clock pulse okay you can see here so q2 is 0 and q1 is in 1 so 0 and then 1 and then this is our second clock pulse okay so when the q1 is 0 and then q2 will be in the 1 okay so q2 is in 1 and q1 is 0 so i can take 1 as well as 0 so the next clock pulse is this one okay so you can take here so q2 is in the same state that is 1 and q1 is also 1 so you can take the values like this okay so let us count the values of it so 0 0 its answer is 0 0 1 its answer is 1 1 0 its answer is 2 1 1 it is 3 so this is our half counter you can see here the values of the counting the counting values are increasing so that means it has started with 0 and then it is getting the counting so it is counting the values from 0 to n so our n values are 2 so 2 power 2 okay so it is 4 so it is counting okay so the values from 0 to 3 so okay so this is about half counter 2 bit triple half counter using positive edge triggering